So let that be a lesson to you. If you're gonna go into your hives with uh, minimal protection, no smoke, no hive tool, and you think you're gonna do something, be prepared to get stung. You wanna do it every day. You're new and you love it and you love your bees and you're excited for everything that they can do, but they need their privacy. Let me see her there. She's got a sticker on the back of her neck on her thorax, number 80. Wow, she stung me. <laughs> yep, got my first sting. It was my fault, I pinched her. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. I think of you and all the shit you don't do. Well, I'm a make hell of Hey everybody, this is Brent from Beekeeping in Paradise. And I, as you can see, I am back here at the bee yard. There's bees behind me over there. Welcome to Beekeeping in Paradise. Welcome to Bye Bye Late Day. Um, it's been about a week since I've been out here. And uh, I just need to do a little check. Um, the last time I was here, I made a few discoveries. First of all, this first hive, this Italian hive over here, is queenless. No queen. Well, I made an attempt to try to solve that problem, and I'm going to take a look and see if I had any, any success. And uh, the rest of these were doing just fine, making some progress. However, they're not making any wax. All beekeeping is local. Anybody who tells you that they've got a book, they've got the magic book that can teach you how to do beekeeping, no matter where you are in the world, they're lying, they're trying to sell you a book. All beekeeping is local. What I learned in Indiana does not any longer apply. Um, what I'm learning here is a totally new kind of beekeeping. The basics remain the same. The, um, but how the bees react, how the bees work, everything is completely different. I'm unaccustomed to it and I'm learning. But all beekeeping is local. People in the northern part of the United States keep bees differently than the people in the middle. Uh, and it's different than the way that people keep bees in the south of the United States. The east coast is way different than the west coast. People in Europe do it completely differently again. People in Australia do it completely differently again. So, it's always, always, always local. That's the one certain thing that I can tell you about beekeeping. All right, let's talk about queenless hives, okay? Um, a lot of people ask, I think, you know, or say, I think my queen, I think my hive is queenless. I don't see my queen. I can't find my queen. Well, queens are pretty slippery. Uh, yes, they're bigger. Yes, they have a big butt on them and uh, they, they look a little bit different and they move slowly, but they can be very hard to find sometimes, especially if they're not marked. And uh, even if they are marked with a, with a paint pencil, hey, Degoy's here, how are you? Caught me talking to myself. Um, that paint can wear off and then you won't be able to spot the queen as easily. Um, the way you check to see if you have a queen or not is to look for brood. If you don't see any eggs, if you don't see any larvae, if you don't see any cat brood, then yeah, you either are totally queenless or you have a queen who is there but is not functioning. Uh, in that case, you've got to get rid of her and get a new one. So let's check things out. I uh, was just talking about uh, queenless hives and how you can tell if your, queen, if your hive is queenless. And my gosh, where's the sun? Um, you don't want to you don't want to just try and find the queen you want to try to find evidence of brood if you can find brood you know there's a queen unless it's all drones if they're if they're only making drones then you can have what's called a laying worker colony where one of the uh, daughter one of the worker bees knows that there's no queen 
and she decides to step up and elevate herself in status. Um, and then she tries to lay eggs in the cells herself. And she's not bred for that, she's not equipped for that, so she doesn't do a very good job. And because she never went out and mated with drones, she doesn't have the other half of the DNA that it's, that's needed to make worker bees. So she can only make boy bees. Um, and it's just a, a whole nother can of worms. But um, if you have no brood at all, and generally the bees will be grumpy, normally you can hear a queenless hive before you can find it because it's loud. Um, and uh, that's just another indication that, they're, that they've gone queenless. Well, this first Italian hive behind me went queenless, in, and I showed you that in the last episode. So what I did was I took one frame that had eggs, larvae, and cap brood from the bottom brood chamber on this Italian hive, and I moved it over to this one. Now, what that does is it gives these bees an opportunity to make what's called an emergency cell an emergency queen they can sense that there's no queen pheromone in the box they know they need a queen and they have because there's no eggs they have no resources or no way to make one of their own so when I give them a cell or when I give them a frame that has eggs of all ages and uh, larva and brood cap brood they're going to get new bees added to the colony when that uh, capped brood emerges. When the older larvae uh, emerge, they're going to also help replenish the numbers in the hive and to become foragers eventually. And then they're going to select some of those eggs and turn them into queen cells. And I was just greeted with a very happy uh, circumstance. I open this hive up and I'm going to try and show you here what I found. So this was the frame that I put in that had eggs, capped larva, and brood. Uh, eggs, larva, and capped brood. And look what we have over here. Right over here, let's see if you can see that. Right over here on the edge, they've made a queen cell. Over here is another queen cell. Here's another queen cell. Here's two more queen cells. I went through this box and there's more over here right on the edge. And they are all capped over. They've all been, they all had eggs. See, right down here is another one. These are nice. This one's not quite capped, but these, the rest of these are. I went through this colony and I found a total of seven queen cells. And they look nice. There were some on this side too. Okay, so that is evidence that there is no queen in here because they knew they needed one, so they made one. Now those seven, possibly more if I missed any, queen cells, those are going to take 16 days in total from the time that they were an egg through maturity. Uh, then they will all emerge in time when they've hit their 16 days and the, and the queens have uh, fully matured inside the cell and gone through their... Uh, pupation they'll emerge they'll come out and the first one that comes out gets to go around and destroy all the others now if i had more strong colonies this is the time that i would want to make splits uh, but my colonies have not grown in strength enough to where i want to split them down and make new i would love to make new colonies i would love to go from um you know because i only need one in here to requeen this hive. If I could extract six more and then take a couple, you know, frames of bees from the other colonies and make 
another six boxes, another six queens, I could go from five hives to 11 hives today. But I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna be patient. I'm gonna let nature take its course. There's gonna be seven queens in here. Whoever comes out first, whoever is the strongest, whoever is the best, uh, she will um, have to fight it out with her sisters and hopefully go out, get mated, come back and take over this hive as a uh, 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 mated uh, laying uh, fully developed queen. So that is excellent news. That's, that's step one in the process. I told you last time that I didn't have a whole lot of faith that uh, this was gonna, uh, well, I told you that I had faith that this part would work and this part is working. The second part, do I have enough drones to get her mated properly? That's a big question. And uh, that is to be determined and that's gonna take about another three weeks, uh, maybe four weeks before we even know that. Because she's gonna, they st she still needs to uh, develop and emerge, fight off her other sisters, leave, mate come back and find out now so it could be up to a month before i know for sure if this is going to be successful and in the meantime i'm going to have to continually add more brood add more brood um just to keep this hive uh strong enough um because every day bees are dying uh not through predators but just through attrition they're getting old they're foraging they're flying their wings off they're doing what they're supposed to do and uh, they just die of old age. But, so that is fantastic good news. On the flip side, I've been feeding these bees a one-to-one -one sugar syrup, and they have not drawn a centimeter of wax. They've had almost a gallon, one liter at a time. They've, had, they've consumed almost a gallon and they have not made any wax whatsoever so i'm disappointed um they not on the foundations and not on the starter strips either but in their defense the hive is weak they don't have a huge population they don't have a big workforce to actually draw the wax so what i've done today so I brought another uh, five and a half liters, but this time I'm cheating them. I'm not giving them one to one. I'm gonna give them uh, one liter of water to three quarters of a kilogram of sugar. So water and sugar have practically the same weight to volume ratio. So practically, it's off by a little bit. So one liter of water is the same as one kilogram of sugar so that would be a one-to-one -one. i'm going one part water to point about 0 0.7 0 0.75 sugar so that hopefully will be a little bit more stimulative for wax production and take down their urge to store it uh, in the brood chamber for fu fu uh, future food so i'm going to put this back together and then feed them and put, and put them back. Hey, I got a little update here. By the way, there are still no ants on the hive. Uh, the pans are uh, still working. Degoy's been putting the water in there and I thank him very much for that. And so the pan idea so far is still working. I am gonna switch it out and use laundry tubs uh, on, the, uh, on the corners, but that is still to come. Uh, for now, toasting the ants has done the trick. No more ants, no more lentic, no, no. no. So uh, happy there, and uh, at least we're at now we're able to get down to just doing some beekeeping and not so much ant keeping.
see her there. She's got a sticker on the back of her neck on her thorax, number 80. Hopefully you can see that there. She's looking for a place to lay an egg. She's looking for an empty cell, and then she's going to stick her tail down in there, and in about 20 seconds she'll have laid an egg. But she doesn't like the sunlight, so I'm going to put her back in here. And leave her alone. Check one more. Ouch. Ow, she stung me. <laughs> yeah, got my first sting. It was my fault, I pinched her. So let that be a lesson to you. If you're gonna go into your hives with uh, minimal protection, no smoke, no hive tool, and you think you're gonna do something, be prepared to get stung. I took my first one right on the tip of my finger, right on the tip of my thumb. It hurts, but it's no big deal. But uh, um, it could have been avoided with a little bit of smoke, but I didn't wanna light the smoker. I'm just here basically to feed and just do a little quick check. Another successful hive inspection when you get your bees it's very tempting to just go in open them up look for that queen keep looking for the queen look for the eggs look for the larva look for everything see if they've brought in any nectar you want to do it every day you're new and you love it and you love your bees and you're excited for everything that they can do but they need their privacy that's why I keep saying it's been about a week since I came out it's been about a week since I came out I don't make videos every day I can't make videos every day of beekeeping. When you, when you get your bees, fight the temptation to come out every day and look at them. Sit outside, get a chair, look at the landing board, watch for pollen coming in. It's fun. See if you can tell the difference between a worker and a drone. The drones will fly out and come back as well. Um, dro drones hang out together. They're a boys club. They go out and look for queens to mate with. So they're coming and going. Have fun looking at your drones. Have fun looking at the workers who are bringing back pollen. But leave your bees alone. Don't be tempted to go in them every day. You're gonna disturb them, and every time you open the lid, you take a chance on crushing your queen. Now, when you do an, an inspection, and you should do one every seven to 10 days, um, what you're looking for is you're looking for evidence of the queen. You want to find eggs or larva or cap brood or all, you should be seeing all three. Once you do that, if you see pollen in there, if you see nectar in there, um, close them back up. 
you found what you needed you don't have to spot the queen because you know she's in there because she's the one laying the eggs um, so make your inspections fast um, but move slowly especially if you're gonna do like me and do it with no smoke no hive tool just going in with just a veil on very light veil t-shirt some people have even mentioned in the comments that I don't always wear a white shirt um, and it's because these bees are pretty chill and even back in Indiana when I had bees that could be a little bit more ornery um, I didn't always wear a white shirt I wear what's convenient um, I always wear pants though and I generally always wear a veil but uh, make your inspections quick find evidence of the Queen find evidence of food and get out of there you don't need to look at every frame so I thought they'd be making wax right away they're not I cannot expand the apiary I cannot expand at all unless they are making wax I will never have honey if they don't make wax so I am a little bit disappointed but at the same time I'm learning and I'm gaining experience keeping bees here in the Philippines like I said if I'm learning something then I'm not disappointed um, I would love to have uh, five frames of honey already I knew that wasn't gonna happen but I'd be happy with a couple of frames of wax and the queen moving up that second box is not for honey that second box is for additional brood frames um, so it's a little it's getting on my nerves just a little bit that the that the bees are so slow at making wax so anyway I've taken a different tack um, I've reduced the amount of sugar increased the amount of water in their syrup hopefully that'll be more stimulative for wax production I'll come back in a few more days and I'll check again so they've got they've each got a full liter of less than one-to-one -one sugar syrup we've got queen cells in our first queenless hive uh, and they got a bunch of them so that is fantastic news I'm gonna have to keep monitoring that one and uh, uh, there will be a broodless period uh, of course and then we are going to uh, see if we can get that queen mated and uh, laying eggs if we can oh boy am I gonna be excited anyway until next time remember I'm Brent this is beekeeping in paradise Wherever you are in the world, if you've got bees, you are definitely beekeeping in paradise. Be well. Be safe. Be kind. God bless. I love you all.